All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this HP laptop model 13-AC033DX. All right, so first thing you're going to do is remove the little rubber feet here. The customer already brought it to me like that. We're going to also need a PH1 or JAS1 screwdriver as well as a T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver. All right, so first let's go ahead and remove the PH1 or JAS1 screws underneath the rubber feet. You want to keep all the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that is I put the flat side down like that. In the pattern, I remove it on my desk. So we got four screws going here. We got two here, and then we got two here. All right, so I'm just going to set the screws down like that. If this video helps you, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices. If it helps you save a bunch of money. Please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. These are customer computer repairs, um, so keep that in mind. I won't have these computers uh, by the time you see the video. All right, so if you have any questions, hopefully you can find the answers in the video itself. Oh, it looks like, I don't know if this customer had their screws changed, but it looks like these are PH0 or JAS0 screws. So we're gonna switch to a PH0 or JAS0 screwdriver and remove these other screws. Again, <clears throat> it looks like somebody might have worked on this before. Keep that in mind. Um, like I was saying, sometimes it's not a good idea to just follow along blindly because the screws might be different if somebody worked on it. I don't know if this is the original setup or if somebody did something with this before. But anyways, let's go ahead and get all these screws out. All right, now that we got all those screws out, it's going to help to use a suction cup. Um, I'm going to be pushing this side down and I'm going to pull up at the center. That will cause the case to flex like this and it will release the clips up here as you can see. All right, so here you can see it's coming out. We're going to go over to this side, same thing. Kind of push that side down as you lift up and there we go. All right, now we're going to wiggle that and get this cover off. Yeah, somebody worked on this before, so I have a feeling it's the motherboard's completely fried. Um, I'm going to disconnect the, let's see, is the CMOS battery under there? Okay, that looks like the CMOS battery under here. We're going to actually take the battery out. So the battery model, if you're wondering, is SH03XL. All right, I have a feeling the battery might have been replaced. Let's see, it's missing some screws inside. Again, you don't want to just blindly follow along. Make sure to check so let's go ahead and remove these screws it looks like these are ph0 or js0 screws um, but again i don't know if somebody messed with this and took things out and got it all out of order but um we're just gonna take these screws out all right so there's apparently two here and then there's two down here i think somebody mixed these screws because that one screw is actually a pH 1 or JS 1 screw and the others are pH 0 so somebody mess with this all right I'm going to disconnect the battery to do that I just grab the wings and kind of just wiggle the connector just like that we're going to have to get this cable out of this plastic loop here all right and then we can go ahead and lift the battery up we're going to make sure to pull the battery connector out all right just like that and here we go so if you need the battery model number, I already said there, SH03XL, but there's also the HP spare part number here, 859356-855. Um, I don't know if this is a replacement battery. Usually the material on here is a little bit different, I would think. Um, anyways, you got the touchpad speaker connector here. Let me actually zoom in on here. We're going to disconnect the CMOS or BIOS battery here, okay? So to get that out, this is a lift connector. So I'm gonna hold the board down here and we're gonna just lift underneath to pop this connector out, just like that. You do wanna make sure to hold the board down. As you can see, it's very flimsy right there. There's this little piece that extends right into there. This is a M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. So there's just one screw, it pops up slightly and then you can pull it out. You got the touchpad connector, keyboard connector, Keyboard backlight, all these connectors have these little flip latches there. All right, we're going to leave that in. You got this little connector for the power button itself, okay? Power button's right there. 
there's no replaceable RAM. RAM is soldered to the board. All right, you got this connector here connecting the USB port as well as the headphone jack here. Okay, that's like clamped underneath the hinge. I don't know if that's how it is originally, but uh, that doesn't look like a good way to put the cable. It looks like it might be damaged and that could possibly be why it's not working right. And it looks like this laptop actually might have had liquid damage. So I flipped that up. I don't know if you can see, but these pins are like burnt there. Okay. I'm going to see if disconnecting this cable will allow the computer to turn on because it looks like it's damaged here. And I have a feeling it might be due to them clamping this. I don't know if that's how it was originally, but uh, it looks like that's not good for the cable, at least I don't think so. All right, of course you got the little fan right here. Another connector for another speaker here, wireless card, one screw holding that in place. The antennas, if you wanna see how to remove them, you can watch my other videos. Um, you got two smaller cables here. I'm not sure what's going to what, but uh, this one is most likely the fan. This one is probably for like the um, webcam or maybe the touchscreen. You got the LCD LVDS connector. If you mess with this, make sure to press and hold the power button after disconnecting the battery for 15 seconds to drain any residual power. I'm actually going to do that and then um, because now I have the BIOS battery disconnected, this computer wasn't turning on. So I'm going to hold this button 15 seconds to drain any power. I'm going to plug it in without the BIOS battery, turn it on, and see if we get anything. All right, so hold it a few more seconds. <clears throat> All right, let's go ahead and plug this in now and see if there's any change. Right now, since there's no BIOS battery and no main battery, um, it might not turn on even if that, even if cleaning it up and stuff helped, but let's see. Okay, so we're going to see, hopefully, the charge light. Okay, I guess the charge light won't come on because there's no battery in it. Actually, okay, it's on. You can see it turned white. All right, so now we're going to push the power button over here and see if we get any change. I see the power button light is on. Now it's shut off. It's on again. It shut off. Okay, I have a feeling it's completely dead. Nothing is happening. I don't see any fans spinning here. I forgot to mention, there's the other speaker cable connection. Oops, sorry. Right there. And then you got another fan connector right there. And that's pretty much all there is inside this laptop. Again, I don't see anything happening. The power light is just flickering on and off and on and off. So... Yeah, no, it's just going on and off. I don't even know if you can see that with the lighting. But, uh, do I actually smell something burning in here? Nope, okay. Okay, so it looks like it's completely dead. It's a motherboard issue. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna let the customer know. It's probably not going to be worth fixing, especially since it's an older laptop. Um, if anything, they can get the data out because there's an M.2 SSD here. Alright, let me make sure to power this off completely and then we're going to drain the power. And then I'm going to put it back together without this connected and see if we have any change, but I doubt it. Alright, I'm going to get the BIOS battery back in. If you're wondering, the red cable goes towards the outside and the black cable goes towards the inside of the laptop, just in case you accidentally mixed them up. Okay, let's go ahead and get the battery back in, just get it all lined up, pinch the two pieces together. Okay, we'll get that in. If you want, get this cable in. I think normally the speaker cable is out there, but I don't know, maybe on this design it's different, the BIOS CMOS RTC battery. That's underneath the thing is connected there. All right, anyways, let's go ahead and put the battery screws back in. And we'll see if there's any change. Most likely not. I know, sorry, this video is kind of weird because somebody worked on it before and mixed up all the screws. 
but uh, hopefully it will be helpful to at least somebody. All right. Let's get this screw in here. Again, there should be another screw down here, but they lost that one as well. All right, let's open this up and see if anything changed or if it's exactly the same. Nothing. And it only turns on while it's plugged in, apparently. The battery doesn't seem to work. So, I think that's pretty much it. We're just going to reassemble this thing. Is it turning on now? Oh, I have to wait till the charge light comes on. There we go. Yeah, it's just going to do the same thing. Alright, let's go ahead and reassemble this. Um, can put this cable back in. Uh... You can actually see this cable is even more burnt in here. So here you can see the cable underneath is burnt there. Okay, and I disconnected it from the main motherboard and it still doesn't want to work. So I think that confirms that it's completely fried. So anyways, I'm going to just plug this back in. I mean, the computer's still somewhat on right now, but... It's already fried, so nothing's going to happen. Okay, so let's go ahead now and put back the bottom cover, and that's pretty much it. Again, hopefully this video helps some of you guys. At least you can upgrade the uh, SSD to a larger one or a faster one. But um, let's go ahead and get this back on. So first you're going to put the bottom part in. You're going to let this rotate down. And then while you're kind of holding this, again, you're going to pull up from the center to help get those into place, just like that. Same thing. Hold on, I'm getting a call. I'll be back. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Anyways, let's go ahead now and put back all the screws. Make sure all these clips are in. If they're not, again, use the center to pull it up. And then you can go ahead and push the clips in. And while you're holding the clips in place, then you can let go. And there we go. Everything is snapped in properly. Let's go ahead and put back the screws. But um, that's pretty much all there is to this. Again, hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can also learn how to upgrade and repair their devices. If it helped you save a bunch of money, again, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Other than that, you're welcome to stay as I put back the rest of the screws. But um, yep, that's it. Let's get all these screws back in. Alright, and that's it. Thanks for watching. See you all in the next one. Let's drop this spike.